For some context, this happened to to a friend of mine, which we'll call him by the name Jeremy. Jeremy was about 26 years old at the time, and this took place about maybe four years ago. Jeremy paced back and forth in his living room, as his mind was pretty much fear with anxiety was racing. It was because of the fact that 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 pretty much that this incident happened to him and it was around the time before the global pandemic. Jeremy moved into a new city for a better job opportunity he got there. He had heard about about a uh, ad on Craigslist about someone needing a roommate at the local news at the local internet. So of course Jeremy decided to take a chance on Craigslist. He met the roommate guy who he'd be sharing the apartment with. His name was Mark, and he seemed like a very friendly and easygoing guy. So Jeremy agreed to move in with him. But as days went by after moving in, Jeremy noticed that there was something odd about Mark. Something really dark that he couldn't understand. He couldn't quite explain how often then Mark would disappear with hours without explanation, and would always come back with a strange look in his eyes. This started to happen about a month after Jeremy moved in with Mark. Of course, Jeremy brushed it off as just Mark being a private person, maybe just a weirdo. That is until he saw him that night. He had come home late from work and walked towards their apartment. When he heard a loud and muffled screams coming from their neighbor's house that was not far from the apartment. Worried, he looked over towards the front door and saw something that he could have never forget. Mark was standing there over their neighbor's lifeless body, a knife dripping with blood in his hand. His eyes were wild and was filled with a sense of satisfaction. Jeremy's blood ran cold when he realized that he had been living with a psychopathic killer all this time. He stood there, just paralyzed with fear and shock as Mark glanced up and saw him standing. Without saying a word, Mark ran past Jeremy and disappeared into the darkness of the night. Jeremy didn't know what to do at this point. He was torn from between calling the police and leaving the apartment to never come back. But something inside him told him that Mark would come back. And he wasn't wrong. The next morning, Jeremy received a call from Mark, apologizing for what he had seen and begging him not to call the police. He had promised that this was a one-time thing and it would never do that again. But Jeremy at this point couldn't trust him. He had seen the darkness within Mark's eyes, and he knew that he was capable of doing it again. He made the decision to move out that very same day without giving Mark a prior notice or second chance. As he was packing his things, he heard a knock on the door. Cautiously, he opened it, half expecting to see Mark standing there, but to his surprise, it was just a delivery man with a package for him. He thanked the delivery man and closed the door, placing the package on the coffee table. As he was just about to open it, he heard a loud noise coming from the kitchen. He quickly grabbed a kitchen knife and slowly made his way, way towards the source of the noise. To his horror, he saw Mark standing in the kitchen holding the bloody knife. He had a sinister smile on his face and he said, I told you not to leave without saying goodbye. Jeremy's heart was racing and beating out of his chest as he realized that Mark had been planning to kill him all along. He had tried to run, but Mark was quicker and grabbed him by the neck, pinning him against the wall. Mark's grip was tight and Jeremy could feel himself losing consciousness. As a last resort, he used all of his strength and pushed Mark away and ran towards the door. He didn't even look back as he heard Mark's furious screams and footsteps chasing after him. He ran as fast as he could, just the thought of his mind to get out of that building and never look back. He finally had reached the main entrance and ran into the street, not without stopping until there was a safe distance away. He quickly called the police from his cell phone and explained everything that happened, leading him to Mark's apartment. The police found Mark still in the apartment, covered in blood and raving like a madman. He was arrested and Jeremy was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. But of course, a few days later, while Jeremy was still recovering from that traumatic experience, he received another package in the mail. This time, it was from Mark. 
Inside there was a note that said, I will always be watching you, along with the lock of his hair. Jeremy knew that somehow Mark had escaped from the police when he was still out there, possibly, but he wasn't really sure. He was waiting for the right moment to strike again, but of course he wasn't really sure when Mark would ever do that. Of course, the day Jeremy was about to leave, leave he, un he ended up dub getting a knock on the door. He opened it to find a police officer standing there. His heart dropped as... We as he heard the officer say, "We, Sir, we found Mark's body in the river. He had, had jumped off the bridge and he died from the impact. Jeremy's body went cold as he realized that Mark had been always ways, ways right. He had said that he was watching him even from death. From that day on, Jeremy me felt safe with his girlfriend. Always he was looking over his shoulder living the fear of Mark's return from the form of the ghosts. But even though Mark was dead, Jeremy still had no idea why Mark wanted to take his own life. It still haunts him to this day knowing that he could have been killed that night if he hadn't pushed Mark out of the way. Now, Sophie was about 26 years old when this took place. It happened just around last year. Here. She used to be in high school at that point. But of course, or she was living with her roommate named Anna. She had been living with Anna for at least the past two years, and everything seemed pretty normal. He, she had found Anna sen nice since the days of college, and Sophie and Anna started really sharing stuff, and the two of them were getting along very well. However, that night was when things were going to be really weird. Not really weird, but it was definitely something that, that no one would ever expect it to, to see. Of course, they were living in a rural area, so there were some trees around the area. Of course, one night, the window was open with the screen, and Sophie had woken up to hear trees were rustling, as if they were blowing in the wind. Sophie had taken the feeling that something was off as she walked into the kitchen, trying to distract herself by making a cup of tea in the middle of the night, just trying to take her mind off of it. She waited for the water to boil. She heard a faint whisper coming from Anna's room. At first, she dismissed it as her imagination, but the whisper grew louder and more distant. Sophie cautiously made her way to Anna's room, only to find it empty. The bed was nearly made, and the room was devoid of personal belongings, as if Anna never lived here. Panicked, Sophie went back to the living room and called Anna's phone number, but unfortunately there was no answer. She tried calling her family and friends, but no one had heard from Anna either. Sophie's mind was racing with all the sorts of possibilities. Had Anna been kidnapped? Had she run away? But why would she do that without telling Sophie? As the days followed, Sophie tried everything to find Anna. She went to the police, but they couldn't even find any evidence of foul play. Anna had simply vanished without a trace. Sophie was left alone in the apartment, trying to make sense of what happened. She wasn't sure if someone kidnapped her or if she left on her own. But there was nothing thing the police could do, even though the case was closed. But as the days turned into weeks... Sophie started to notice strange occurrences in the apartment. Doors would open and close on their own, lights would flicker, and she would even hear footsteps when she was alone. She brushed it off eventually as her mind played tricks on her, but she knew deep down something was not right. One night Sophie had woke up to a figure standing at the foot of her bed. It was a woman with long dark hair, and her face was contorted into an expression of pure terror. It was sleep paralysis Sophie was experiencing. She screamed and turned on the lights, but the figure was gone. She convinced herself it was just a bad dream, but of course, she wasn't sure who that woman was. As the weeks went by, Sophie became more and more paranoid. She started to see the figure in various places around the apartment. Sometimes she would see it in the corner of her eye, but when she turned around to look at it, it would be gone. Other times she would just see it standing in the doorway. 
watching her. Sophie couldn't take it anymore. She knew she had to get out of the apartment. Just as when she was packing her bags, the figure appeared right in front of her. It, she could feel it breathing down her neck, a cold, putrid breath that made her feel sick to her stomach. Sophie screamed and ran out of the apartment, but of course, she checked into a hotel for that night, trying to calm her nerves as the sense as what happened. She started to do some research and found out that the apartment building, where she and Anna had been living at the time, was rumored to be haunted. Apparently a young woman had disappeared from that building many years ago, and her body was never found. Some people have claimed to seen her ghost, wandering the halls at night. Sophie was shaken. Was it possible that Anna had been taken by this ghost? Had she been living with a ghost in the past? Two years without knowing it? Sophie couldn't believe what she was thinking, if it was paranormal or not. When she remembered the figure had been seen in a bedroom, it had to look familiar. The next day, Sophie decided to go to the apartment and gathered her things. She was planning to move to another place, which of course she found, and she had been planning to move out for quite a while. Yo. But when she got there, she found a surprise in sight. Anna was sitting in the living room, as if nothing had happened. Her hair was disheveled and she looked like she hadn't slept in days. Anna, where have you been? I've been so worried about you. Sophie exclaimed, trying to contain her emotions. Anna looked at her with a blank expression. What are you talking about, Sophie? I've been here this whole time. Sophie couldn't believe what she was hearing. Had Anna been living in the apartment this whole time? But how was that possible? She had searched every inch of multiple times and never found any trace of Anna. As if they sat and talked, Sophie just couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. But she didn't want to push Anna. She was just happy that her roommate was back and seemingly unharmed. That night, as Sophie was getting ready for bed, she noticed that Anna's room was open. She cautiously walked in and found a diary lying on the, diary lying on the bed. The diary was open to the date that Anna was disappeared. Sophie started to read, and her blood ran cold as she realized that the entry was written by the ghost of a young woman who had disappeared from the apartment years ago and had been possessing Anna's body the whole time while trying to find a way to leave the apartment and move on. Of course, Sophie made a difficult decision to call a priest and cleanse the apartment and help with the ghost find peace. But since then, Sophie had never experienced any paranormal activity in the apartment. Although she never heard from Anna again since they both moved, she knew that both her and the ghost were finally at peace. It, she still isn't sure if what she was experiencing was paranormal or something really crazy. But still to this day, Sophie had never had anything like this ever happen again. This happened to a college student named Jim, and this took place about two years ago. Jim nervously looked around his dorm room, not fully believing that he was finally at college. It had been his dream for as long as he could remember. Now it was finally coming to him. He couldn't wait to start his classes and make new friends at the university college, but one thing that made him a bit apprehensive was his roommate. His roommate was name was Danny and he was already standing by the bunk bed fixing up his side of the room. He looked a little bit of a typical college student with his messy hair, tight jeans, but there was something about him that made him feel really uneasy. Maybe it was the way he seemed to be hiding something, a secret lurking just beneath the surface. Jim decided to shrug it off as his worry breeze and focuses on getting settled in. Of course, he unpacked his belongings and set up his side of the room, trying his best to make it a more as comfortable as possible. Mark, on the other hand, didn't seem to have too much in to unpack. He had a few t-shirts and pants and a laptop that he had set up on his desk. Jim noticed that he also had a small USB drive attached to his keychain. He thought that maybe it probably was for schoolwork, so he decided that maybe it was just that. Of course, a lot of people use USB drives to fill 
you know, with lots of things, but this was definitely strange. However, as his days of college went on, Jim tried his best to try to get to know Danny a bit better. But the more he tried, the more he felt like that there was a wall between them. Of course, Danny was always polite and friendly, but as always a distance between them, as it's almost as he had something to hide. One night, Jim was working on a late assignment when Danny came into the room, looking pale and shaken. Jim could tell that he was clearly upset and decided to ask him what was wrong. Danny hesitated for a moment before saying, I, I lost my USB drive. It has all my important files and projects on it. Jim could see the panic in Danny's eyes and immediately offered to help him look for it. They searched the entire room, but unfortunately it was nowhere to be found. How was it possible that the USB could have been gone? After all, it could have had schoolwork for a college student. Of course, he couldn't find out, and they decided to go to the lost and found of the school college campus, and they said they would keep an eye out for it. But the next day, though, Jim noticed that Danny was acting strange. He seemed nervous and a bit on edge. As he kept glancing at his laptop every now and then, Jim decided to talk to him to see if he was alright. Danny seemed reluctant at first, but he finally opened up with it. I... I have a secret, Jim, and I don't know if I can trust you with it, Danny said. His voice was trembling. Jim was taken aback as he always suspected that Danny had a secret, but never expected him to actually admit it. Mark went... Danny went on to explain that his USB drive had some strange files on it, and he was worried that they might have been compromised. He had received it from a friend and wasn't so sure on it, but it was starting to suspect that it might be something messed up. He showed Jim the USB drive that he founded, and they both saw that it was filled with cryptic symbols and strange images. Danny was convinced that it might have been some sort of dark magic, and since he was scared of what it might do, Jim being the curious, adventurous person he was, he couldn't resist on the temptation to investigate. They spent the entire night trying to decode symbols, and by the end of it, they had discovered that it was some ritual for a summoning a demon. Jim was skeptical, but Danny was convinced that the USB drive was cursed. Whoever possessed it must have had to perform the ritual or suffer the consequences. Jim tried to brush it off as being a silly superstition, but he couldn't shake off the feeling that there was something off about the USB drive. Was it because of a demon or something? They weren't really sure or were about it. They decided to destroy the USB drive. Once they destroyed the USB drive, they ended up throwing it out and they had a made an agreement to never bring it up or talk about it to anyone or bring it up to anyone one. Since then, they had kept this a secret and they had never told anybody about it. It's still as strange to this day that that Danny brings it up once in a while, but however Mark but however that's when and Jim decided that he should move on, which he did and he's now living with his girlfriend and they've got two kids now, and they have never seen anything like this before in their lives.